What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man Chaz Ellis once again answering the questions that you ask me. Make sure you hit me up on the ChazEllisProject.com if you want to be a part of picking the next video. Get a consultation, make a donation, whatever. Um, also, if you want to get uh, uh, if you want to get access to the online class that we're having October the 26th on Sunday at 5 p.m., make sure you go ahead to ChazEllisProject.com for that too. Anyway. Um, I got a question based on a video that I did about players not the 90 day rule not affecting players. A lot of y'all hit me up and y'all wanted to know how to connect emotionally with a guy because I talked about that in the video. Um, one of the biggest things is a lot of y'all have heard and read and just got a lot of different information about connecting emotionally with guys and about what to expect from dudes. Um, and a lot of the information you got was pretty good. The, diff, the only problem is that men don't really want to piss you off when they give you information. Just the way it is. So, what ends up happening is you lose a big part of it because the part that's going to piss you off or most likely to piss you off is kind of sliced off. And that's kind of what happens. Um, and I'm going to give you all of the information with all of the pieces. And that's what I do. I mean, you know, if I make you mad, it don't bother me. I know some people are going to be mad. I know I'm going to get some comments. It's cool. Anyway, so what a lot of time, a lot of times what you learn is how to find a good man, um, how to demand that a man treat you a certain way and all that kind of stuff. That's what you get. That's what they teach you. Um, but they don't really teach you a lot of, you know, what it takes to be attractive to a good man. So before I talk to you about how to do these things, how to make that connection with the man, I got to tell you a couple things and you got to make sure you got to get on the same page with me for this to work. A lot of you won't get on the same page and it won't work, but you know, that's on you. Anyway, what you got to understand is number one, first and foremost, if you were willing to drop everything, every superficial qualification that you had, you would have already found a guy that was willing to worship the ground you walk on and give you everything you want. The guy who will treat you, you know, the way you want to be treated might be four feet tall. Um, the guy who will treat you the way you want to be treated might live in his mama's basement. But like the rest of us, like all of the people in the world, you're superficial. That's okay. You have superficial needs and wants. People have to have a certain amount of money. You may have justified these things to yourself and caught and decided that they're not superficial, but they are. Um, they're not about what some, what's on the inside of a person. Your car you drive is not about what's on the inside of you. How tall you are is not about what's on the inside. What you look like is not about what's on the inside. So let's be real with ourselves. Okay, so because of that, because you have these, uh, because you have a lot of superficial things that matter to you, it's harder to find a person that's going to treat you the way you want to be treated. That's one thing you got to look at. And another thing you got to look at is you diss people too. Be real with yourself. You friend zone people. You play people off that you don't really like like that. You take things from people and don't give them what they want or expect in return. Be real with yourself. Because once you do that, you can understand what it takes to get somebody to value you. Because you can look at the same stuff it takes to get you to value them. Okay, those are things we got to look at. Now, we got to understand this. Generally, when you want to be with somebody, Everything is about four categories. Physical. That's basically what, it, what you look like. Um, your fitness level. Your, your, um, your face. Your, all of that. You, you just, just your physical appearance in general. You know, all of that. Um, then you have your financial and social status. That's pretty much how much money you make. Whether you're educated or not. Do you have kids? Um... Do you, you know, are you really popular in the community? Uh, all of that stuff. Your financial and your social status. Where are you? Who are you? Um, your personality. That's how smart you are. Um, yeah, if you're outgoing, if you're quiet, if you're funny. All of those things that have to do with your personality. Um, then you have spiritual. That's religion. Um, how, what you're association with nature, um, how you feel about things and, 
and connect to people, you know, all of that stuff. Okay, those are things that we have. And those are things we generally pick people by. Now, the thing about that is most people, and this is going to tell you when I talk to you about connecting with a man emotionally, before you can connect with a man emotionally, you have to connect with him on these levels. You have to connect with him on those superficial levels. The same way that you pick people. That's why we talked about that earlier. The same way you choose people, you have to be chosen in that same fashion. A lot of people want to be like, I want a person that's this, 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 and this. And then they don't really think about the fact that, wait a minute, that person has to choose somebody too. And they're going to choose based on things that they find to be important. Um, which is going to be in that same criteria. Um, or those same categories. So you got to look at that and understand that. Now what a lot of women have trouble with is the fact that they want things that they can't necessarily match. And then they wonder why they can't connect with a person on an emotional level. Because you're not what they want. Remember uh, in the other video I said um, it's about... I said in another video one time it's about... It starts out about being about who you are. And then you, it becomes who you are to them. So if a person doesn't like who you are, who you are to them really don't matter. Okay, so that's what we got to connect with first. Now, what I mean by this is like, look at our look at physical, for instance. That's the first one. Um, that's what you see first, generally. But when you look at a physical connection, say your, say your ideal guy is... Six foot two, um, looks like Idris Alba, and um, works out every day and all that kind of stuff, and just in great shape, lives a wonderful, you know, just physically fit, got a six pack, you know, got muscles everywhere and all that kind of stuff. Say that's the type of dude that you like, all right? Now, you have to ask yourself the question, not this is what I like, so this is what I should get, but you have to ask yourself the question, Am I with someone like him would want? So even if you got a guy already and you say, man, he's good looking. People say he look like Idris Alba. Uh, he's, he's muscular, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is the type of guy that most girls flock to. I see anywhere he goes, girls are checking for him, you know, because this is the type of dude. This is what I want. It's cool that you want somebody like that. But you have to ask yourself the question, what do they want? And if you don't fit into that, then you got to ask yourself, how, am, how is this person ever going to really value me? When I look at, the, when you, you have to look at the thing that you want the most, you say, okay, this physical appearance is what I really want. It's right here. This is what a lot of other girls want. Do I have what it takes to cultivate that? Do I have what it takes to help him to stay at that level physically? You see what I'm saying? Do I have what someone who is physically at that level would want? Because you don't have to be what he is. You don't got to be buff. Okay, he might be buff. You don't got to be buff. You know, you may not like that. But you have to be what that person is looking for. Uh, for instance is, if they work out and they're physically fit, you smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, um, smoke weed, eat crap all day, never exercise. How the hell y'all going to get together? And stay together. Okay, maybe he might have liked you. Maybe you do have a pretty nice body. And maybe you, he liked thicker girls or whatever. And you was like, okay, y'all worked out for that reason. Initially. But when he trying to go to the gym and you over here smoking cigarettes, how do y'all connect? How You can't smoke around him. Your friends probably smoke. So y'all can't really chill together. Your friends probably drink. And that's how you have a good time. So how are y'all going to connect? Y'all don't do the same things. You can't make them good meals because y'all couldn't eat at the same time. You eat crap. So even if you knew how to make a good meal that would be healthy for him and, and what he likes to do, you couldn't maintain that because y'all couldn't even eat at the same time. You'd be making him some vegan meal or some crap like that, and he'd be over here talking about, man, this is good. And you're like, wish I could go to McDonald's. Some bull crap. I don't want this. He taking you to the gym, you on a treadmill, like, oh my God, I'm tired. <laughs> oh my God, I put my hamstring. That's how you acting. Y'all can't connect. So you might want somebody who's here physically, but ultimately that's not going to work for you and how you are. 
you're going to have to get somebody who's on your level, who lives their life like you. Or you're going to have to improve your level. You're going to have to drop the things that are keeping you from connecting to this guy. You understand what I'm saying? Because there's only two things that can happen. Either he can go down to your level and no longer be what you're looking for, or you can go up to his level and y'all can be together. I guess the third one is just doesn't work out. Or get treated like crap. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what happens. You get treated like crap by the dude because you're not what he's looking for. So he's kind of like, I can take you or leave you. You're not going to find this high-level dude anywhere, but he can always find somebody who doesn't have what he wants. You have to meet him up there because that's what you want. All right. Now we look at financial, for instance. Now, like I said, you don't have to be the person that you want to be with, but you have to be what complements that person and what they're looking for. Like, a lot of women say they want a guy that's got money, you know. Say you're looking for a guy, you say, man, I want somebody to make six figures and has a nice car, is educated, has a nice house. That's what I'm looking for. You don't have to have six figures to get that dude. Matter of fact, it might even be better if you don't have six figures. Why? Because most people who have a lot of money work a lot. Duh. That's pretty obvious, right? Most people who have a lot of money put a lot of work and effort into their career. He may not be looking for somebody who puts a lot of effort into their career, but he's probably also not looking for somebody who is up to their eyeballs in debt, not very educated, um, not very outgoing. And you can pull from other categories, too, to be with somebody. Because just because, this, just because what you want is in this particular category doesn't mean things from other categories aren't what that guy's looking for. It just has to be like, this is what you're looking for in this particular category. Do I have the things that correspond to that? Do I have the things that attract someone like that? For instance, if you live in the projects, you have five kids, you're broke as hell, you're in debt up to your eyeballs, you sound ghetto when you talk, no disrespect to anybody, but that's just, you know, you sound ghetto when you talk, all your friends are ghetto as hell, um, you, you cause trouble around people, and then you're sitting here thinking to yourself, why can't I find somebody better than this? First of all, where the hell are you going to meet them? You hang around ghetto people. So that most likely you're going to find ghetto people. So that's going to be tough on you. You're going to have trouble meeting the man of your dreams. Not only that, because of the fact that you're ghetto, you know, you're not going to be able to be his best foot forward when you go somewhere. You're going to go to a... Um, he might take you to a meeting or something. You over eating sunflower seeds. I'm a... Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. These sunflower seeds is good, though. You know, that's not going to work. So you have to be a person that can that can get connected to hit the people that he connects to. You don't necessarily have to have a lot of money, but you have to have time on your hands. You have to have the intelligence to connect with his dreams and goals and be able to, to help him pursue those. You have to ask yourself, how do I help him? Because if I got... If I make six figures and he makes six figures, he can already pay his bills without me. So how am I helping him be better? So sometimes women, a lot of, that's what a lot of successful women have problems with, is that they're like, well, I got what he got, so he lucky to have me. Yeah, but how are you? Just like you sitting here saying I can pay my own bills, he can pay his own. What are you really doing? What are you bringing to the table that he doesn't have? You have to bring something to the table he doesn't have. Or he's not going to be interested. So that's what you got to look at. When you're looking at financial, social status, things of those nature, what do you bring to the, stat, to the table for somebody who has those things? How can you help them forward their career? How can you be there for them? How can you help them with their children when you guys have them or whatever the case may be? How do you do that? That's going to get you valued at a higher level. Um, when you look at personality, how does your personality go along with theirs? You know, you can't be sitting here talking about, I just want somebody who's funny and kind and generous and, all that, and you're bitchy. They probably not going to like you. They're probably going to be like, because their friends like somebody like them. So when they bring you around, they're not going to like you. That's going to make it harder for them to connect with you because their friends going to expect them to be with somebody nice. So that means that you're going to already have people working against you. 
So there's going to be hard to make an emo emotional connection because he's not going to think he has the same catch that you do. Because it's hard to find really nice people who have good personalities and are funny and kind and all those things. That's hard to find. Bitchy people who got bad attitudes are dime a dozen. So you got to say, in this category, where am I? Where, where do I rank? I mean, if I'm out of shape, don't take care of myself, how many people like me do I see on a daily basis? But I'm trying to get a uh, super physically fit, ridiculously attractive person. You don't see that every day. You could walk around and see thousands of people and never see somebody who's that who looks like that. So if that's not you, then you got to ask yourself the question, am I what they're looking for? And if you're not, it's going to be tough. Some people with the spiritual thing. I hear of women all the time like, I want a Christian man. I want a Christian man. I want a man that's a real Christian. Okay, well, it's easy to figure out what, what you get, what you have to have to get that. You have to be what a biblical wife would be. Not what you thought. Not what mommy and daddy told you. Not what your preacher even said. What you read in the Bible. There's a book. That's, if somebody is a Christian, they got a book that they read. That tells them what they're supposed to do. If you're doing stuff that's outside of that book that you decided society wanted you to do or your friends or your family or something wants you to do, guess what? You're not going to get a Christian. You're going to get somebody who pretends to be a Christian. Simple as that. The way you act gets those type of people. So if you're not what a wife would be in terms of the Bible, that's all you can go by because that's what he is, a Christian. So... If you're not that, guess what? You're not going to find the dude that you're looking for. And if you do find him, he's not going to be interested. Because you're not going to be what he's looking for. Y'all going to fight all the time. And he's going to be he's gonna be right according to y'all values. If he's a Christian and he's really doing the teachings, if you're not doing the teachings, how can you get along? It's impossible. You may not be ready for the person that you say you want. You got to get yourself on point as a Christian if that's what you're looking for a Muslim or whatever, whatever religion you are, if that's what you're looking for, you got to find some, you got to be on point and it, or you, or it doesn't work. You don't want no super good Christian and you out in the club every night drinking, smoking weed, having sex with all these different people and all this kind of crap. You cuss all the time. You got a bad attitude. You get with if you got with a man, you wouldn't feel like he was what he's supposed to be biblically in the household to you. Doesn't work that way. Cause he's got to be fake to be with you, and you want somebody that's real. Otherwise, you could just date a regular dude on the street. You know, you don't need a Christian to do, to do all the same stuff that you know to not follow the teachings. You know, so that's what you got to make sure you look at. You got to look at who you are to the person that you're trying to be with. Look at these categories. Be, and you got to be real and be honest with yourself and say, man, what am I really in terms of what I look for? Like, am I a person that could even date somebody who is financially stable? Am I financially stable? Do I have my stuff together? Is that even possible? Do I really need to date somebody who's spiritual? Do I really need... Because am I self-absorbed and materialistic? Now, what spiritual person really wants to be with me? And it's not that you have to give up. It's that you have to make some improvements. And you can make improvements while you're in the relationship. A lot of people get in a relationship and they say, well, what if you're already with the dude? So what? You're already with him. You're supposed to keep improving your life. You don't find somebody and then go, okay, well, whatever I was when I found him, that's what I'm stuck as. You have to keep improving or you keep getting worse. Some of y'all started out, y'all are physically right there with the dude, but then got a, got a guy, stopped working out, had some kids, stopped taking care of yourself. Let's be real. Now his value for you has gone down. And it's hard to make that emotional connection. You know, some of y'all do that with a lot of different things. So make sure that when you get a person and you find what you're looking for, you look at those attributes, you look at the reason why you picked that person and make sure that everything you have connects with that. Because if it doesn't, he's not going to have value for you. You're not going to be able to make a good emotional connection that's going to last. What's going to happen is you may get married, and that may be your first, second, third, fourth, fifth wedding, whatever. Because some people do that. 
they initially connect with people and they seem cool and everything like that. But because you're not necessarily what they want, you try all these tricks and stuff to get that person to do what you want them to do. Like you go, okay, well, if I wait until I get married, then he'll marry me. Okay, but what do you do after that? What do you do when you no longer have sex to hold out on? These are things you have to look at. You have to understand. Okay? Make sure you get yourself on par with the person that you want to be with. Make sure that you're being real with yourself, honest with yourself, and you get yourself on par with the person you want to be with. All right? Make sure you get ready for the next video. This is going to show you how to emotionally connect after you've got yourself on par. This is going to show you how to get yourself into a man's emotions so that you can get to the next level with him. Once again, it's your man, Chaz Ellis. Make sure you get ready for that next video. There'll probably be a link to it at the bottom somewhere or something. Um, but be ready for the next video. Peace.